Hi, I'm Phil. I grow orchids in Whanganui, which is in coastal New Zealand. This is one of a series of videos that I'm putting together on different types of orchids that are suited to temperate climates, such as ours here in New Zealand. Since Pephiopedalum is such a large and diverse group, I've chosen to make two videos on this topic. This one is on the main groups of PAFs, their features and how their culture varies. So my aim in this video is learning how the subgroups suggest slightly different growing requirements. Much of what I'll be discussing here is general rather than specific. There will be various exceptions. Paths are natives to Southeast Asia. The ones we grow largely come from Eastern India through to Indonesia. The main subgenera or groupings within Paphiopetalum are Paphiopetalum or Insigne, Sigma Petalum, aka Barbata or Mordii, Parvicepalum, Brachypetalum, and Multiflorals or Polyanthus. The plants I'm showing in this diagram are fairly indicative of their group. For instance, Paphiopetalum or Insignes have a strong substance in the flowers and plain leaves. Parvicepalums or Parvis have a small dorsal sepal compared with the other groups. Brachypetalums have rounded petals. Barbata or Mordii have got mottled leaves and fine veining and or spots in the flowers, particularly in the dorsal sepal. Cochlear petalums have narrow petals, often twisted or hairy. Multiflorals have a number of flowers on the spike and plain leaves and are the biggest growing paths. Fortunately for those growing them, most path breeding is actually within the subgenera rather than between them. So therefore you can make generalizations within that group that can be spread across a number of them. Firstly, I'll focus on where the subgenera mainly grow and I'll limit my discussion to the species within them that have been included in the breeding of plants that have been given awards in New Zealand over the last 10 years, which is probably reflective of other countries. I'll start with Paphiopetalum or Insigne group, since they have been the most commonly grown subgenera in days gone by. They're also very forgiving. As can be seen in the map, the types commonly grown in temperate countries come from the northern part of this range, from eastern India through to southern China. As a result, they are adapted to cooler conditions than the more tropical varieties. They also mainly grow in light shade, so are tolerant of fairly bright light. The largest breeding contributor of the Insigne group is Insigne itself. Others that are heavily interbred with this and fairly similar looking include Spicerianum, Velosum, Tigrinum, and Drurii. Others in the group that are used for breeding, but less so, and have a rather different appearance are Henrianum, Hirsutissimum, Charlesworthii, and Ferianum. An example of a very successful and highly awarded hybrid from crossing Insigne with Spicerianum is Lianum. It's typical of the look of Insigne group hybrids. The next group I'll consider is Parvicetalums or Parvis. This group has become sought after as forms have become more available. As can be seen on the map, they also grow in the northerly part of the PAF range, including inland areas that get cold in winter. Thus, they can tolerate relative cold and actually need a fairly cool dormant period in winter. They grow under the shade of trees, so don't, don't tolerate as much light as insignes. I have a friend who has found that he can grow his parvies uh, under his bench with protection from, from above. Having said this, all parvies are quite small and dainty plants. They aren't as tolerant of mistreatment, say pests or such like as insigne types. Working from the most cold hardy, the parvies include Armeniacum, Malapoensi, Mitranthum, Hangianum, Emersonii, Vietnamensi, and Delanati. An example of hybridization within this group is Phaneticum, which is a cross, sometimes naturally occurring in the wild, between Malapoensi and Mitranthum. I'll now discuss the Barbata or Mordii group, which is a very diverse one and a huge part of modern breeding. These grow all over the show in Southeast Asia, so are relatively hard to pin down. I'll use Paph sukaculii, which is the most commonly used ancestor of modern hybrids, of all Paphs, as a benchmark. This grows under trees in inland Thailand, so requires warmer temperatures than the previous group, and also reasonable shade. Another common source of breeding, Paph lawrencianum, grows close to the sea in northern Borneo, and requires warmer temperatures again. Since there is a huge amount of breeding among Barbata, it is fair to treat them as requiring temperatures of over 10 degrees Celsius. 
they do tolerate fairly strong light. A lot of the Barbata group are fairly similar and are intensively interbred. These I find quite similar in appearance are Succuculei, Perperatum, Thanustum, Callosum, Superbians, and Lorentzianum. Other similar ones tolerating lower light or temperatures are Barbatum and Mordii. Forms with less similar appearance are Appletonianum, Tonsum, Mastercianum, Hookeri, and Dianum. A typical example of interbreeding within this group is Macaba, which is Succuculei crossed with the hybrid Voodoo Magic. A group growing in similar conditions is Brachypetalums, which grow in a range from warm situations, for example Pathnivium, to more temperate, for example Path Blatulum. Others in the group are Concala, Godfroyi, and Leucochylum. An example of breeding in this group is Wesleyanum, a cross of Godfroyi and Concala. Again, their light requirements vary, but mainly they tolerate fairly strong light. There are two groups that particularly need constant warmth and certainly have no rest period, such as those mentioned for parvies. The main group here is the multiflorals, big growing and plain leaf plants that are widespread in a tropical zone, mainly in Indonesia, Malaysia and the Philippines. Multiflorals need fairly strong light to flower. The minor group is coccopetalums, which share a similar territory. Multiflorals are easy to pick. Apart from their growth habit, the flowers have long petals. For instance, Philippinensi, Rothschildianum, and Loei. A famous cross between Philippinensi and Rothschildianum is since with them. Cochlopetalums are actually a different group, but with similar requirements to multiflorals. They are a small group, similar looking to each other, for instance, Primulinum, Glucophyllum, and Moquitianum. An example of hybridizing Primulinum and Glucophyllum is Pinocchio. So, Confused? Well, I'll attempt to put all this into perspective. Here are some graphs showing the requirements. Again, I generalise, just showing the main sources of modern breeding. The Insigni group is the most tolerant for temperate climates, putting up with high light and cool temperatures. Likewise, the Parvies, although they won't cope with the degree of sunlight that Insignis will. The intermediate group are Barbata, which requires a reasonable degree of protection from the cold, and Brachys which have a broad range of temperature requirements but generally don't cope with excessive cold. Finally, the multiflorals and coclopetalums need warm conditions, generally a minimum of about 15 degrees. Some of the multiflorals are big growing, which helps them to cope with the cold, but warmth is still needed to bring them to flowering along with strong light. Putting the different groups together, the variations in requirements become clear. Insignies and parvies will tolerate cool conditions and may actually require winter chilling. Barbata and brachys need intermediate temperatures without a cool spell. Finally, the multiflorals and coclopetalums need constant warmth and strong light. A reminder that I've produced a companion video to this one where I discuss the general requirements for growing this genus. So for example, the potting media, the amount of light and watering requirements would tend to be fairly specific. Thanks for watching.